It's Rich Lord from Rich Lord Travels. Today we're going around Dewsbury Town Centre. Come with me and find out why it was England's greenest town in the 19th century. Find out what the town centre has to offer and I also try a new cuisine of food. Let's go! Look at this. Got a picture of a dog on this dog beautician shop here. You go next door to the Crack and Edge convenience store. And you get your tiger done as well. Great stuff. This here is the old Dewsbury Central Station and the Station Hotel across the road. The uh, Central Station was operational from 1880 through to 1964. Used to run services to Leeds, Bradford, Wakefield and London King's Cross. Still a great building. Shame more can't be done with these things like that. Those arches. It's a fantastic opportunity for someone to have a great prominent place in Dewsbury. Here we have Dewsbury Market. There's been a market in Dewsbury since 1318. That was at Thornhill, just not too far at the town centre. Moved to Dewsbury Town Centre, closed in 1583 due to an outbreak of the plague and then re-established in 1740. The outdoor market is one of the largest in Yorkshire, about 300 stores, so we're going to explore that in a bit. So let's go through the market here, lots of clothing available. We're all setting up for the morning, lots of basket wares. Rugs and carpets. Like in the old sign with the light. It's one good thing about markets, you can get absolutely anything. Got a butcher's, got a deli. Greetings cards, fruit and veg. What's going on? Things. Pineapples for a quid. Great stuff. Rhubarb. Obviously we're in the not far from the rhubarb triangle. It's a pet shop with all nice bedding for pets. Say hello to my friend here. Hello. Bedding and throws and everything. Hats. Perfumes and fragrances, books, lots of things going on. This is a good place. Lots of bags, lots of stalls, people setting up, lots of bargains available. You can even get a toilet seat for a fiver. Wow. Where else can you get a toilet seat for a fiver? Woo! Very nice. Workwear. Markets serve the local community so well. They need to be supported. So that's the market setting up. You've got all the stalls getting busy for a, hopefully a nice bigger sales. Lots of food available. And we've got burgers available over here. Shoe stall, more clothing down there. Oh, that's some interesting food down here. Let's have a look. Oh, these look nice. I might have to indulge myself later on. Good stuff. Looking through the gates, Jewsbury Market. Big sign. Jewsbury Market is not closing. Support your local market. They're good. This statue is called the Rugby Player and the Ripper. No, not that Ripper. This here is a statue of Rugby League player Lee Gilmore, who's from the town. 
and this here is a ripper because here she is with her shears now the story of a ripper is a ripper in the textile industry used to cut off all the zips and the buttons from old clothing to be able to recycle the cloth into uh, getting breaking down all the fibres and everything and to be able to create new clothes from those so that is the uh, the rugby league player the rugby player and the ripper and the railway bridges as the backdrop Dewsbury so here we have uh, one of the mosques in Dewsbury that's 35 in the region and we come across here it's also a Islamic education and culture center great buildings if you look at the detail up at the top there's a balcony and the next building is what is now Kirklees College looking after the educational needs of the locals Dewsbury falls under Kirklees Council but has a Wakefield telephone dialing code this used to be the Dewsbury Pioneers Industrial Society in 1879 it's good that the college has repurposed the building let's go and have a look at those blue plaques over there so the Dewsbury Pioneers Industrial Society Central Stores designed by Holtem and Fox opened in 1880 department shops on the ground floor there's a library conversation rooms nice and offices on the first floor and an industrial hall with 15, 1500 seats on the second floor further extensions northwards were added in 1896 and 1914 and now it's the college uh, looking by this uh, black sign here to commemorate completion of Dewsbury Townscape Heritage Initiative and Pioneer House Restoration bit of a mouthful it was completed in seven, uh, 17, <laughs> September 2020 not 1720 great stuff loving the, uh, the old Yorkshire stonework on these buildings great stuff In this part of town they don't need chain stores, they've got a fancy fabrics and haberdashery store, Jester's, Pops, Homeworld, PFC, Casablanca Takeaway, where someone's taken away the Y. What was Timpsons is now become a uh, bit of a hardware store with lots of different everything in there. Followed by Legend Barbers, where legends go for their haircut. Everyone I've spoken to so far is really friendly, they're so wanting people to enjoy being in Dewsbury while they're shopping, while they're coming here to have a look round. As I parked the car earlier on, the person in this car said hello, good morning, and the shopkeepers are saying hello as you walk past them as well. It's, it's great to have that kind of community feel. It's good. Dewsbury's a good place. Dewsbury people, good people. Yes, there are parts of town that need a bit of doing up, but there's opportunities to do stuff with. If there's the investment in these buildings they will become amazing buildings like the the college building here like the other buildings have been there's some people here going for a bike ride all kitted up in their uh, the gear great to see even on a driving lesson they got a chance to speak to their friends out and about good to see it's such a friendly place good good I do love buildings with a, a large clock, so wherever you are, you can see the time as you're driving past or walking past. It's slightly ironic that the, uh, the pub nearest to it, the timepiece, currently closed. I think it used to be a Weatherspoons by the looks of the, uh, the font in the building. I'm liking the style of this lamppost up here. That's pretty special. Another one along there, all the way up this road here, Bond Street. There's an outreach hub, West Yorkshire Hardship Project. 
people looking out for each other in the community that's good to see this is what was the old picture house and used by the old cinema unfortunately no longer around but they've uh, decided to decorate the frontage still making it impressive so this here is the Dewsbury pedestrianised area nice shelter here a couple of those these are the first few chain places I've seen so far Specsavers Virgin Money a few betting shops I do like these though, these are in a nice touch for shoppers to shelter under in not very nice weather. The same guy who did the uh, the dog beautician's shutter, Trafford Parsons, he's done this other one here. Wouldn't want to pick a fight with this dude. This great building, the arcade, I love that even in buildings that aren't used they've got a shadow of what happened in the past they're asking you to uh, go to arcade-dewsbury.org with your anecdotes old and new as to what's happened in Dewsbury in days gone by got another painting of Betty Boothroyd she was the MP for West Bromwich in the West Midlands and she was also Speaker of the House of Commons from 1992 to 2000. First female Speaker in the House of Commons. And uh, one who's not to be messed with. Next door to Betty is a uh, painting of a Dewsbury girl, Eileen Fenton, MBE. She was the first woman home in the Daily Mail cross-channel race in 1950. Well done Eileen. Come on Eileen. <laughs> We've even got Vivian Westwood in town as well. Not that she's from Dewsbury. Dewsbury Town Hall. Not to be confused with the Leicester City player Keenan Dewsbury Hall. That's not his house. If you ask a runner what they think of when they see this site of Dewsbury Town Hall they might be reminded of the uh, the Dewsbury 10k t-shirts a few years ago which had a dotted line around the outline of the building which made it look like something else so a bit more about the town hall it was built in 1886 to 1889 of local Ashlar stone in the French Renaissance style it only cost £40,000. Bargain. Some people's cars cost more than that nowadays. You could get a whole town hall back in 1889 for that. It used to have the uh, municipal offices, the courthouse and the police station, as often many of them did have them combined back at the day. Impressive. There's a uh, celebration of innovation in textiles at the moment. Woven in Kirklees. Outside Dewsbury Town Hall is this statue called the Good Samaritan. This was created to celebrate the pedestrianisation of the town centre. There's the man helping someone in need. I've seen a few people like this on a night out, actually. <laughs> Not me, obviously. The party is coming to Dewsbury. Bingo, that's bonkers. This is the Long Causeway Church. It's a United Reformed Church. It's an impressive sculpting on the outside of this building. See that even along here where you've got your regular shops like Coupland's and Superdrug, Costa Coffee, there's also Q 
community shops like this long causeway church three strand cafe not sure what the three strands are oh it says the cord of three strands is not easily broken well-being for the mind body and spirit here we have some lettering just to the left hand side of the town hall Dewsbury the letters of Dewsbury here created by artist cubic fruit and now on here the letters D U R and Y were reclaimed from a local uh, reclamation yard and then the artist created E W S B so it's good use of materials that are already out there creating a piece of artwork for that for people to identify with and to know where they are Dewsbury and we're going through the underpass this is done by artist Tessella transforming the underpass with 3,000 bespoke ceramic tiles good stuff coming through out towards Dewsbury Library morning library also I think I don't know what makes me think about I think Dewsbury Library may have been Mecca Bingo what do you reckon there's the library is all this seating area here to watch the world go by and no doubt to see some wildlife because there's all these bird boxes up here it's good to see there's lots going on next up we have the Minster Church of All Saints the team parish of Dewsbury what's the difference between a minster and a cathedral you ask well because we like to be informative on this channel let's have a look now a cathedral is generally recognized as the seat of a bishop making cathedrals specifically a place of worship for denominations that have that title a minster like this one is a church built during Anglo-Saxon times in Britain related to teaching space used by missionaries or connected to a monastery there you go sound surrounded by the uh, town hall clock going at the same time let's go and explore now we love a blue plaque on this channel Dewsbury Minster a church was established here in Saxon times Dewsbury Parish extended from Wakefield to Burnley 8th century masonry and carving still survive the nave arcades date from 12th and 13th centuries and the tower and north aisle are by John Carr 1767 Patrick Bronte was cured here 1809 to 1811 who was he? he was the father of Charlotte Bronte Emily Bronte and Anne Bronte Charlotte Bronte wrote Jane Eyre Emily Bronte wrote Wuthering Heights no not Kate Bush and Anne Bronte wrote The Tenant of Wildfell Hall what we have here is the Kohima Epitaph from the Burma Star Association it says when you go home tell them of us and say for your tomorrow we gave our today thank you just walking through the grounds of Dewsbury Minster you've seen these snowdrops here the crocuses growing all over little daffodils tete a tete in the distance and all these here that's good so what else do we know about Dewsbury Minster well Saint Paulinus P-A-U-L-I-N-U-S Paulinus is said to have preached at the crossing point of the River Calder in Dewsbury in 627 AD and the church was established here as we've just heard in Saxon times shortly afterwards there's a preaching cross inside the building that dates back to 850 AD which is a very long time ago 
1492 there was a bloke called Thomas de Sutthill. He uh, was a rich bloke and he noticed that one of his servant boys had not been attending church. So in a fit of rage he threw him in the mill pond and the boy drowned. Tragic. But that's not the end of the story. As a penance for this, obviously rich people don't go to jail. As a penance for this, he paid for the bell in the bell tower. It's called Black Tom, named after him, Thomas de Suthill. Now, that's not the end of it. He didn't just pay for the bell to be created and to be housed here in Dewsbury Minster. Every year on Christmas Eve from 1492 onwards, the bell is told one year, that one time for every year that Christ has been around since the year zero to obviously 2024 now. So that happens on Christmas Eve and it's due to end on midnight every single year. So last year, 2023, they had to ring the bell for, I think it's 100 strokes a minute or something like that, uh, to try and get the bell in time to be finished before midnight. It takes about an hour and a half or so, apparently, uh, to get all the bells rung in there. It's an interesting thing. So there we have Jewsbury Minster inside. Black Tom. Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire. A lot of these buildings around Dewsbury have got uh, a history, they've got a past. This is the Market House Inn, which is now Dewsbury Hardware and General Store. The Market House used to be a heritage inn and it was uh, made known by virtue of its historic interest this here is a famous shop so it claims i've never heard of it but we have now we're on daisy hill and here's some daisies painted again by Trafford parsons hey up that's in yorkshire can't you tell by the cobbles <laughs> another good building here this used to be hodgson's cloth warehouse back in the day dewsbury was seen as the England's greenest town in the 19th century because they were internationally renowned as a clothing recycling town as we saw earlier with the uh, uh, the ripper cutting and uh, shearing off the zips and buttons off old clothes to be able to recycle them into other usage so uh, great to see as you go around some of these back streets, look at the stonework and the buildings. It's all impressive stuff. This here on Grove Street used to be an auction house and then a dance hall and then and then Luke Howgate, a funeral furnisher, came in the 1920s. You've got Mr. Fox, auctioneer, and Dr. Fernley, the first mayor of Dewsbury, on the right there. Here we are back at Dewsbury Market. All the stalls ready to go. Sell lots. Dewsbury's a good little town. Come to Dewsbury. I'm having my first experience of Afghan food. Looking forward to it. Um, can you just describe to me what it is again, please? This is potato, oh no, this is chicken mince pot bread. Excellent, thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Is there anything better than a good market fruit and vegetable? It's great, you've got grapes, you've got strawberries, you've got papayas, lychees, melons, oranges. Everything you could need is here. Fantastic. A sun-kissed Dewsbury Market. Lots of stalls, lots of options. It's been going forever. I've had a good old shop as well as a good walk round. It's important to support local business. 
especially when they're all independent traders like so much of Dewsbury is. There's not as many chain places like some towns, but lots of independence, which is great for the local economy, great for the community, and all the money stays in the local area, which is fantastic. And we're back at the car now, just where we started. So I'm about to eat my uh, chicken and potato bread here, my Afghan food. I'm, uh, I've got my grapes and my strawberries to have later on today and I got some sweets for during the week as well. All bought from independent local traders around here. Dewsbury is a great place, a great town, lots of friendly people. Come to Dewsbury, it's good. So this is Rich Lord from Rich Lord Travels signing off. Thank you for watching. I'm going to eat this before the dog eats it. Cheers. Bye.